Hey guys, Richard Holder here. Here's a question. Which one would you rather have? A supercharged small block or a supercharged big block? Guess what? There's no wrong answer because I tested both. Wah. In this video, we ran a 400 inch small block and a 496 inch big block, both with the same Pro Charger F1A94 supercharger. Not only did we run the same supercharger, we ran the same pulleys on the supercharger. So the speed of the blower was the same on the small block as it was on the big block. So here's the question. How much power did it make on the modified small block? How much power did it make on the modified big block? What was the change in boost? Why are we still talking about this? Let's get going. To get things started in our big block versus a small block comparison, we have a 400 inch small block. This thing started out as a crate motor from the guys at Blueprint Engines. This was in the wagon owned by Chad Reynolds that they used for the uh, series The Fastest Car when he was racing the wagon, which was awesome. It was Daphne's wagon that she had run a bunch and uh, everybody misses Daphne. She was awesome. It ran uh, a long time with nitrous on it and it was a power adder 400 inch small block. It was equipped with a, you know, a fairly uh, decent size cam. It was a 236, 248 at 50. Yeah, that's what it came with. It had the uh, as cast aluminum blueprint small block Chevy heads, an RPM air gap, and a Holley 950 when we ran it on the dyno. Uh, it, it ran best at about 34 or 35 degrees, and, and you can see the jetting here. It was an uh, 87 uh, actually, we took jetting out of it. We went from an 87-88 down to an 82-82 split on the 950 XP Holly. So run in this manner before we did our upgrades on it. The 400 inch, the low compression 400 inch motor was nine and a half to one. Produced 458 horsepower and 473 foot pounds of torque. Knowing that we were trying to make more power for this combination and for that uh, TV show for the ultimate drag race against the supercar, we upgraded the small block and here is when we put a set of trick flow heads on this thing. We put a set of TFS Super 23 230, so 230 cc intake port heads. We also stepped up in camshaft to a, it was a Comp XR300R camshaft. It was a 562-580 lift split. And we had 1.6 rockers on, so it actually stepped things up to a 599.619. The duration checked in at 248.254 at 50, and it had a 110 degree lobe separation angle. Instead of the RPM air gap, we switched over to an Edelbrock Victor Jr. And it was actually set up to run port EFI injection on it. So we could have better tuning once we added the blower. We had a one inch spacer on this and a Holley 4150,000 CFM throttle body on it. It had a set of inch and three quarter dyno headers on it. We had big injectors in this thing because we knew we were going to be putting a blower on it and we were going to be running E85 on it. So we had 120 pound Holley injectors and obviously a Holley HP ECU. So when we did the upgrade, the power output of this thing jumped up to 529 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 478 foot pounds but it moved the torque production out quite a bit farther because peak torque was now at 53 or 5400, whereas before it was at 4200. So we shifted the torque peak by 1000 RPM. But here's what happened when we added the supercharger and this was a, a pro charger. It was an F1A94. And what I'll do is we'll show you the boost curves between the big block and the small block versions. Uh, we ran the same blower pulley on both of the combinations. And in fact, it was exactly the same blower and the same pulley. It was a four and a half inch blower pulley. We ran this thing on E85 and managed to exceed a thousand horsepower. This thing made a thousand and six horsepower and peak torque checked in at 874 foot-pounds of torque. So as you can see, we equipped with the supercharger on this small block, it made a big difference in power. And we didn't turn this thing all the way up because a four and a half inch blower pulley is actually still fairly big. Um, we had much smaller pulleys, we could have increased the boost on this, but we thought that this was a good power output for the thing to run in the car and <laughs> to be able to run in this particular race that we ran. Um, because, you know, obviously traction starts to become an issue with this kind of deal. But let's compare this now to the big block with the same supercharger and the same pulley. 
Next combination we applied the supercharger to was a big block. It was a 496 inch stroker big block, which is kind of about the limit for these production blocks. Uh, you know, if you want to go up to a big bore version, but they never really offered the 502 on um, the big bore version blocks in any of the production motors. So for a 454, whether it's a Gen 1 or a Mark 4, a Gen 5 or Gen 6, 496 is kind of the common go-to displacement for these things. And that's, and we did that by putting a 4.25 inch stroke in one of these. And this one was a Gen 5 block. We had Carrillo CP uh, crank or pistons and rods in this. We had a SCAT crank. We had a healthy comp cam. It was kind of my go-to cam for the blower stuff. It was a comp BR300, and which is a 652 lift, a 255-262 degree duration split. It was a solid roller cam and 114 degree lobe separation angle. We've run this cam on a lot of stuff. As you can see, it will make good NA power. It also works well with the supercharger. We've run it with the turbo and nitrous and all that stuff. Uh, the combination also had a set of Promax CNC ported heads. The notes here say 355. I thought that they were 340s, but they're a CNC ported set of heads and they're not real high dollar stuff, but they worked very well and was way more cylinder head than this combination use could use. We weren't using anywhere near what these things flowed. So they were kind of overkill in this combination, but they work well. We teamed those with an Edelbrock Super Victor intake. Uh, flange for a dominator carburetor and ran a 1050 dominator. We had our uh, two and a quarter inch, two and an eighth inch um, dyno headers for the big block and MSD distributor and, and all that stuff. We ran, this thing ran best with 38 degrees of total timing. And we had obviously jetted the dominator carburetor so that this thing would make good power NA before installing the supercharger on it. So here is what happened. We, we made 677 horsepower in A. Peak torque checked in at 591 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we installed the Pro Charger F1A94 Supercharger, same one that we ran on that 400-inch small block. We also ran it with the same 4.5-inch blower pulley and the same size crank pulley. Both of these combinations were run with an air-to-water intercooler and run on E85. So as you can see, we have a very <laughs> rapidly rising power curve. The blower worked good on this combination. It made over 1,100 horsepower, 1,144 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 923 foot-pounds at 25, 925 foot-pounds. And it's interesting to note that peak torque came at the our peak test RPM of 6,500 RPM, which means that the power curve was still climbing dramatically and we weren't yet to the, the power peak. We could have rev this thing uh, much higher, but we were only looking to, when we first put this big block together, we were only looking to make a thousand horsepower. <laughs> and we easily exceeded that with our uh, blower combination with the, the air to water intercooler and the 85. So this thing worked out really well. But now let's compare the power outputs of the supercharged small block to the supercharged big block. And you can see a difference of the comparison. So we'll compare the NA stuff and then we'll compare the the supercharged stuff, and then we'll compare the boost curves of each one of them, and so we can take a look at all that data. So the first thing we want to do is compare the NA power outputs between the small block and the big block, and this is our big block, and here's what our small block did once it was modified. So as we can see, the small block made 529 horsepower. The big block made 507 or 677 horsepower. And as expected, the comparison between a 400 inch more motor and one that's almost 100 cubic inches more displacement, it made more power everywhere. They both had good ported heads. They both had good camshafts. They both had good intake manifolds and they had the displacement that they had. So it's a good comparison. And this is the reason why you <laughs> pick a bigger motor <laughs> because when you pick a bigger motor and if you feed it properly, meaning the proper heads cam and intake manifold, it will make good power and it will make more power than a smaller motor does. So here's a good comparison NA, but now let's take a look at our combinations once we add the supercharger. And this is kind of an interesting comparison here. So if we look at our supercharged small block, and we will get rid of our 
fuel so it's less confusing and here's our supercharged big block this is an interesting comparison and, and i made a mistake in in my description previously the big block was not run with e85 it was run with uh, race gas and not e85 whereas the small block was running e85 so there's a little bit of a gain from the e85 by itself but the interesting thing and this will this will come into play You'll understand this a little bit more when we cover the boost curves of the, these two. Because remember, we ran the same supercharger and the same pulley ratio. So we were running the blower at the same speed relative to the engine on both combinations. So the boost curve is kind of an interesting deal. But here is the power output. And we know that the big block made more. It made 1144 compared to, you know, a, a touch over a thousand horsepower for the small block. But the interesting thing is that through much of the curve, they kind of made the same power. Um, the... The big block made a little bit more at the beginning, but from about 4,200 all the way out to 5,100 or so, they kind of made the same power. And then the big block kind of pulled away out here at the top and ended up making more power as we would expect it to. It made almost 140 more horsepower, um, which kind of puts it in the realm of what it did naturally aspirated. It's, it's an interesting thing. Um, we expect a motor that makes more power NA once we boost it to make more power under boost. But let's take a look at the boost curves and we can kind of figure out why maybe there isn't as big a difference on the boosted combinations as there was on the NA combination. So here are the boost curves of our 400 inch small block and we will compare that to the 496 inch big block. Both of them run with the Procharger F1A94 with the same pulley combinations. On the small block, we started out at 6.1 PSI down at 3,600 RPM. And out here at 6,300, we produced a peak of 16.7 pounds. So, so now if we compare that to the 496 big block, the boost was much lower on the big block with the same blower run at the same speed. So we ran it uh, about 200 RPM higher, but tested at the same RPM. The big block had 10.4 pounds compared to 16.7 pounds. And it ended up making a peak of 11.2 pounds out at 6,500. It also started lower, started down at 3.8 pounds. So you can see there's a big disparity between the boost pressure supplied by the blower to each of these combinations. Now we know that that's a function of whatever the NA power output is, and that's also a function of the displacement and the head flow and the cam timing, the intake manifold. The bigger motor obviously made more power. It used more airflow. So when the blower supplied the same amount of air, theoretical airflow to, to both of them, the big block used more. And so the boost pressure was down. So let's get to our conclusion and we'll talk a little bit about why you guys think these things made the same power through a portion of that power curve. Okay, guys, what is the takeaway in our comparison between the supercharged big block and the supercharged small block? And I love this kind of stuff. This is the thing that I like about having access to all of this data and all this testing that I've run over these many, many years is you get to go back and take a look at this stuff and kind of compare it. So it's interesting that we ran these two different combinations, different displacements and different NA power outputs, both with the same supercharger at the same blower speed, because that begs the question. We obviously saw a difference in the boost supplied to each one and that's a function of the NA power output. But my question to you guys is, why did these things make the same power in that RPM range? Now, we have a couple things to think about. One, one of them had E85 and one of them had race grass. And we know if we run E85 in something, because of the cooling effect, it obviously adds more power to that combination. We saw ultimately the big block make more peak power, which is exactly what we'd expect, but why didn't it make more power through the whole RPM range? So guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think, why you think that that's the case. But because here's what we've seen in the past, if we were to run a turbo on this and we run the same boost for each combination, we know that the motor that makes more power NA would make more power under boost, assuming that the boost level was the same. But on a supercharged combination, whether it's a centrifugal like we ran or a roots blower, you have the following problem. When we run the blower speed the same, we're not going to provide the same amount of boost to both combinations. Theoretically, if we spin the blower the same speed, we're going to have the same airflow to both combinations. So therefore they should both make the same power, right? Only that's not what happens because the blower is having to work against pressure on the smaller motor. It's basically not utilizing as much flow 
the blower is actually going to flow less. Now we would be able to see that if we had uh, an air turbine on the right side of the blower so we could see how much air was actually processing during this testing. But we didn't do that. We can theoretically state that, hey, it didn't use as much airflow as the big block did. But it's kind of interesting that they made the same power in that RPM range. And again, why did they do that? I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that stuff. More and more testing coming up.